Welcome to Data Drivers. I'm your host, Andrew Smith of Think Uncommon. In this series, we explore essential strategies for retailers to harness the power of data and analytics. We'll guide you through the tools and techniques that enable a deep understanding of your customers' preferences and behaviors. Learn how to optimize everything from backend operations to logistics and supply chain management, maximizing efficiency and enhancing customer satisfaction. This episode is all about the importance of customer lifetime value analysis in retail. This includes not only how retailers calculate customer lifetime value or CLV, but also how they segment customers based on value and use insights to prioritize marketing efforts and those ever important retention strategies. Now, before we get started, don't forget to check the description below for information and news about what's coming up from the Retail Cloud Alliance. Now, let's dive in. There are several metrics to consider, but key metrics that are crucial for understanding and maximizing the value each customer brings over the course of their relationship with the brand include things like customer acquisition costs or purchase frequency, average purchase value. I like looking at customer value specifically because it's often a component of CLB, but it means the product of average purchase value and purchase frequency by period or by season. And it can include anything which is in including sales, like referrals, social media advocacy, reviews. One thing that's critical when managing the lifetime value is really having a integrated customer database that allows you to not only track the customer spend across multiple areas, but also it helps you bring in third-party data from other sources to help strengthen your customer segmentation. Today with personalization, everyone's trying to achieve more one-to-one and use marketing automation to try to get to the point where you're doing real-time personalization based on the difference between myself and someone else. And maybe we're in the same marketing segment. We might uh, even be in the same demographics, we might be the same age, the same gender, live in the same area, um, but our affinities and preferences are going to be different. So that's why it's important today to really think about marketing automation and AI and personalization to give that one-to-one -one experience because you and I, even if we're in that same segment, may purchase differently, we may operate differently, we may interact differently with the brand. When organizations think about personalizing marketing campaigns, retention strategy, and even to some extent personalizing merchandising, they really need to evaluate and look at the world through one targeted messaging. How can I launch a campaign that's tailored to resonate with each segment or micro segment of my customers? For instance, my High value customers might receive personalized emails that might highlight exclusive benefits, early store access hours, early sales hours, where some of my budget conscious segments might be better targeted for special offers and promotions. The way that I want to talk and target shoppers that are specific in rural areas is probably different than the way I want to talk to suburban shoppers versus urban shoppers. I can, can think about growing up in rural Pennsylvania, where you were almost two hours from most retail stores, getting something that showed up at the house that required me to go to the store to receive a discount would have been a monumental feat at the time. But having an email come to me that tells me about a bonus that I can use or discount I can use online is very enticing for me in that particular position. So for business models that are born in the cloud, they tend to have more agile systems. They're not as reliant on legacy systems and they're able to quickly change and adapt to customer needs or a trend. There's this acute focus, however, with e-commerce or anything born in the cloud around customer journey taking place through digital touch points. These are just easier to track than say in-store metrics, which is a major physical component of calculating CLB for brick and mortar stores. However, Brick and mortar stores, retailers, they may have a longer customer lifespan due to all of the customer loyalty that they've earned and established with the customer over time. 
CLV becomes even more convoluted when you're thinking of multi-department or non-traditional retailers that are selling a diverse set of goods, streaming services, cloud services. So basically, the more varied that your customer interactions are and your revenue streams, the more difficult it's going to be to calculate CLV. In terms of how the retailers actually will use their customer segmentation to influence marketing, there's many different ways and most retailers will have their own unique way of creating the segmentations but they're very similar than the others so for example you can have loyalty campaigns which is exactly what it sounds like where you're trying to keep customers loyal customers loyal so it might seem kind of crazy to think why do i have to be targeting my most loyal customers well it's because usually your most loyal customers are your most profitable and you don't want to lose them. Another type you could do is we're switching and this gets into brand switching. So if you have a customer who has been buying ABC brand consistently for the last two years and all of a sudden you notice that they're not buying it anymore and they've switched to their competitive brand, that would be where you're trying to bring them back and get that customer back to buying the original brand. And then lastly, which is some of the biggest opportunities for them is when it comes to the demographics, you have your Gen Xers. They're probably in their best earning years. Many of them still have children living at home and are spending a lot of money. Another way to look at it is the children move out. Ultimately, they're empty nesters, so they're gonna look at other things to spend money on, such as maybe it's a new car or it's travel is things they've been putting off for years about themselves because they've been focusing on their children. And, and I mean, the other big group that's also tied in here is millennials are really a, a prime target, have a much bigger spend in terms of their basket size. Well, I think that AI and machine learning are going to continue to be imperative as we move forward with customer lifetime value, right? The great thing about AI and even generative AI is that it can work a lot quicker and more efficiently than any human can. And so what AI and machine learning can do is build upon all of that data and then look at different segments and cohorts and detect patterns and trends much more quickly than any human can. And so what ends up happening is as you run these things through AI and machine learning models is it has much quicker processing power to build out the models and identify those trends and cohorts. And then um, marketing people can come in and create programs and create uh, different experiences based on what machine learning and AI has been able to produce in a much more effective manner. And I think the other area that I see organizations investing in is as they start to understand more about their customer shopping behaviors and more importantly, maybe what they're shopping for that aren't carried in their particular retail stores or distribution centers. I see a lot of folks using AI and ML to determine and inform a strategy around assortment expansion. There's a lot of platforms out there that help you expand assortment in this multi-vendor commerce category that allow retailers to be able to offer an expanded set of assortment to their customers that are looking for those products without having to bring those products into owned inventory and making what sometimes feels like an insurmountable working capital expense without taking risk on that overall inventory. That wraps another episode of Data Drivers, and I certainly hope you got a lifetime's worth of value from this episode. In our next episode, as part of the modern retail experience, we'll be looking at how to automate pricing with Internet of Things or IoT devices. To learn more about the Retail Cloud Alliance, don't forget to click the link below and subscribe to our channel so you're first in line to watch the latest episodes. I'm your host, Andrew Smith of Think Uncommon. See you next time for more Data Drivers.